Back in March of 2020, I gained access to a super secret set of information from the very top of AMD. This source back then suggested to me that big RDNA 2 would be roughly double the performance of top RDNA 1, which at the time, of course, was the 5700 XT. And now I can finally reveal my source. Rick Bergman, who said all of this publicly during AMD's Financial Analyst Day on March 5th. And look, while we didn't have a lot of details at the beginning of this year, we should have been able to take 2x as a pretty good indication considering AMD's been a straight shooter since, well, after Vega. Really, Vega was the last time AMD overhyped and underdelivered. All of their Zen slides, whether it was Zen Plus, Zen 2, and now Zen 3, I assume, uh, if they say it's going to be a certain level of performance, that's a level of performance it is. I, I really think a lot of people underestimated if AMD could deliver based on their past mistakes, but also this misconception that AMD couldn't compete in the high end. It wasn't that they couldn't, right? It's that they chose not to. Just look at the RX 480, around 230 millimeter squared die, whereas top Pascal was double that. You know, there was a 384-bit Xbox One X, but not one in the desktop space because AMD was choosing not to compete in the high end. But if you saw Navi 2X, that should have told you everything you need to know. AMD was going to choose to compete in the high end again, not against Turing, but against whatever NVIDIA's newest architecture was, and that is, of course, as we know today, Ampere. And boy, did they demonstrate they're going to in the October 28th presentation. And I really do recommend you guys watch this yourselves. It's under 25 minutes long. It's really easy to get through and covers a lot of ground quickly. But anyways, here are my quick thoughts summarizing the performance of Big Navi. Let us remember that RDNA 1 brought a 50% performance per watt improvement over GCN, and AMD promised to do the same with RDNA 2. Except, of course, today they showed that it was over 50%, 54%. And that was through multiple avenues of increasing performance per watt. But the star of the show was easily the new smart access memory and infinity cache system. You know, the little optimizations they made with a large set of cache that they took from what they learned in Zen Design. And it gave them an architecture that competes with all of high-end Ampere, starting with the RTX 3070 that... Well, is losing to the 6800. I know they show the 2080 Ti, but to me, this shows a 4 to 8% lead over the 3070, even in 4K. And of course, AMD's card has double the VRAM for about 15% more money. And then above that is a true 3080 competitor. Now, it's going to depend on the resolution you play at, but keep in mind it uses less energy and it has more VRAM in 4K. But I'll touch more on that later. Actually, an interesting note is that the 6800 XT is the card they showed off on October 8th, and their performance numbers today were a little bit higher. Scott Urkelman wasn't lying when he said that the clocks hadn't been finalized. And speaking of finalized and clock speeds, let's get to the star of the show. The 6900 XT that is, by all counts, a 3090 competitor. And again, I don't know if it's fair to say it beats the 3090. I wouldn't say that. I'll touch on that more in a second. But it competes, and it competes at $1,000. So, yeah, at the end of the day, AMD has delivered with a true set of cards that compete with all of high-end Ampere. Let's talk about what's good and bad out of what was shown. As of this recording, it feels like most people online have almost only good things to say about this presentation because... Well, for some reason, people were believing the bad rumors that AMD couldn't compete in the high end if they didn't want to, but they can. So once that shock and awe uh, wears off, you might come to the realization that this was a slight overperforming of what we should have expected, at least in my opinion. You know, let's go through the negatives. First of all, I did not see a direct DLSS competitor emphasized. Now, look, I know they talked about this super sampling, sharpening fidelity FX feature, um, and I do believe that will be what they will market as the competitor to DLSS, but it wasn't, there were no firm numbers, and there was no, like, five-minute demo. This is a big deal for a lot of people, DLSS. It was a joke when it first came out, but it isn't anymore, so this is something we do need to watch, and that's really all I can say right now. And let me be clear, I'm not trying to be negative towards AMD, I'm just saying that I wanted more than a promise they'll have something. 
I wanted them to show what that something was and how it will be better or at least comparable to DLSS. And to be clear, I do believe this Fidelity FX package will work fairly close to DLSS with much greater support, but until it is, we just have to say AMD has an answer. We can't say it's better or even as good as what NVIDIA has. And actually on the negatives, ray tracing. Yes, RDNA 2 has it, but they didn't show any numbers. And I actually expected to see some numbers for some game benchmarked with ray tracing on, and we didn't see that. So all I can say is I'm sticking by what I've been reporting for months, better than Turing ray tracing, but clearly worse than Ampere. If it was around the same as Ampere, they would have told you. And so I'm just going to... I'm just, that's all we can really say right now, you know? Um, and I guess there were other little things too. Like for instance, the 6800 XT was benchmarked against the 3080 and 1440p. When they showed 4K performance, they didn't put the 3080 next to it. And so I stand by that it's probably a hair weaker than the 3080 in 4K. And additionally, the 6900 XT benchmark that roughly matched the 3090 didn't exceed it. And assumedly has worse ray tracing performance, had Rage Mode turned on. Now, again, let me be clear. I still think it will, even with Rage Mode on, use less energy than the 3090, and it costs $500 less. But at the same time, I don't know that I'd brag about costing $500 less than a graphics card that I think is a complete and utter joke and waste of your time. You know, if you compare anything to the 3090, it looks good in price performance. So, yeah, I guess that's what we will say. AMD has something close to a 3090 and something close to a 3080, but it sounds like both of them are maybe a hair weaker. Well, just like I said, being far more efficient, offering more VRAM, and offering a slightly lower price. But then we also just have to hope they have software that meets it. All right, now let's talk about the positive things that I think some people may have missed. And really, when it comes to talking about, you know, positive points that you may have missed, I really just want to focus on a chart of how AMD is truly sandwiching NVIDIA's lineup between cards that will be hard to compete with. So I've been trying to convey to everyone how AMD doesn't need to completely take the performance crown while still making Ampere look ridiculous. And hopefully this chart here will help convey my point now that we have official numbers. Now it's of course worth mentioning that we don't have third-party benchmarks yet for you know, the Radeon cards and the NVIDIA cards. You could probably find different numbers depending on the website you go to. But I'm pretty confident that, roughly speaking, this is the performance uh, and the pricing of the lineup as we go down this stack here. I mean, and again, of course, some of these cards aren't out yet, so I'm guesstimating on them. But anyways, let me make my point, huh? So at the top, you have the 3090. And this is the 6900 XT with Rage Mode on. Considering the 3090's power usage, I, I think it's fair. I think it's fair for me to just throw this in with Rage Mode on. It is almost the same performance, and it is $500 less. And let us remember how hard it is to get a 3090. This is key to understanding AMD's competitiveness this fall. You may say, oh, well, the price performance isn't that much better than Ampere, but you can't get your hands on Ampere. There's a lot of people, a lot of people who message me in DM saying, should I wait for the 3090? And saying things like, I want a card before Cyberpunk. Look, 35,000 3090s will be delivered uh, in about a week or two now from now, but that's not enough. That's not enough to satisfy the demands. So there are plenty of people who want a top spec gaming PC who will just get this instead. And then the people that want to save some money on the 3080, again, availability isn't great. And well, look, if you want a high-end card, you can go, I want the 3080 for 4K, but man, 10 gigabytes is just barely cutting it. And oh wait, but I can save money and get basically the same performance with more VRAM. And with Rage Mode on, this should actually just barely exceed the 3080 even in 4K, or I can get something stronger with also more VRAM. The 3080 is completely sandwiched between two cards that, to me, look more tantalizing, assuming their software works out, of course. And then if we move down the stack, it gets way, way worse for NVIDIA. The 3070 is here at an awkward $500. Again, for another 80 bucks, you can get something with double the VRAM and more performance, or I believe in quarter one, you'll be able to save $100 for most of the performance and still more VRAM. So you're going, okay, well, I want to save some money, and this has more RAM? Yeah, I'm getting the 6700 XT. Then I believe this 3060 Ti is about what the performance and price will be. And again, 
I believe it will be probably around the same performance as a 6700 XT, but again, less VRAM and sandwiched between two cards that have more VRAM. This is the key to AMD's competitive lineup here. When people walk into stores and then they see they can't get an Ampere card, they can see a cheaper option with more VRAM or more expensive and stronger option with more VRAM across the entire lineup. Basically, if Ampere cards were hitting their MSRPs for the Founders Edition and then the AIB models were below the Founders MSRP pricing and there was great availability, we would say, well, Ampere and RDNA 2 are competitive, but I don't see a complete slam dunk here for AMD. But that's just not what's happening. Ampere is not highly available, and I do believe it is because NVIDIA rushed out a generation, tried to jack up prices, and it's entirely backfired on them. Uh, and now they're just holding back stock to redo their lineup because they know, well, they know they've messed up. You know, I, multiple rumors are coming out now about a slightly more cut down GA102 and a slightly less cut down version of the GA102 3080. I stand by what I theorized in my last video. I believe NVIDIA is holding back a lot of their dies now and they're considering redoing their lineup because it just doesn't make sense. Like this is why the 16 gigabyte 3070 was canceled because they don't have room for it when they're gonna launch a 10 gigabyte 3070 Ti. This is why the 20 gigabyte 3080 was canceled because they don't have room for it where they're gonna launch some kind of 12 gigabyte 3080 Ti that is effectively a 12 gigabyte 3090. There's no room for the 16 and 20 gigabyte cards. NVIDIA is forced to completely redo everything and that's gonna give AMD right around when it launches RDNA 2, a window to take a ton of market share. Um, and I do have more to say about availability, but first let me get to this ad. It turns out BenQ really is a fan of gamers and content creators. They recently sent me their EW2780U 4K monitor for use in editing, and I have to admit, the difference between a 4K plus 1080p screen for editing to just simply dual 4K is Pretty nice, and this panel doesn't skimp on features. It is a 27-inch IPS panel with 60 hertz, 5 millisecond, greater gay response times, although I overclocked mine to 67 hertz, and it even comes with built-in speakers, various audio profiles, and 95% DCI P3 color gamut for editors. In all honesty, this monitor's reproductions of colors is not that much worse than my Concept D professional grade monitor that cost almost twice as much so if you just need 60 Hertz and you want fairly accurate color and entry-level HDR this isn't a bad option use the links in the description to find this monitor yourself or go to BenQ's website for more information hey maybe that monitor would go well with a new big Navi graphics card but uh well if you want to get one can you that's one of a few things I want to touch on before closing out this video uh, basically availability Right now, and I should have more information over the coming month, but as of right now, I would summarize it like this. RDNA 2 will be a full, large launch that you've come to expect. Think anyone who went through RX 480 or something, you know? A lot of cards, but you know, it's still not going to be completely satisfied. Um, I mean, even the RX 480 sold out instantly at launch, or almost instantly. But if you really tried to within the first hour, you could get one. I did. It wasn't impossible. The problem is that NVIDIA has completely screwed up this launch. Like, not only did they think they could get away with launching early and then releasing cards later, but now they're holding back stock again to redo their lineup uh, to better compete in price performance with RDNA 2. And I just don't think NVIDIA will really have this all sorted out until quarter one, and who knows what cards they will have out by then. You know, so AMD basically, even though they're coming out later, even though the launch dates, just to be clear, are November 18th for the 6800 XT and the 6800, and then December 8th for the 6900 XT, I think that there will be a ton of people that couldn't get Ampere and are desperate to get any high-end card before Christmas, and so... Even if it's a standard launch, I believe these cards are going to sell out immediately because basically AMD's being forced, and I'm sure they're happy to be forced to do this, being forced to satisfy as much of the TAM for quarter four as they can. They are being forced to address the market with all of their cards because NVIDIA has fumbled this launch so spectacularly. So 
There will be real cards. If you're up, you know, right when they hit new egg, you should be able to get one like the ARCs 480. It's just, I expect twice as many people as before with previous launches to be trying to get these because they couldn't get an Ampere card. So there will be availability and there will be continued flow of availability from AMD, but you're going to be fighting with a lot of other people. And finally, I've been confident about RDNA 2 the whole time, and I won't dwell on this, but I have to say it, because I had clearly good information months ago. And there were a lot of people that mocked this channel as guessing or throwing stuff out there. I'm sorry, when I look at my RDNA 2 leak from a month ago, it was almost all entirely correct from start to finish. You know, Big Navi didn't crush the 3090 by 20% like the AM Delusional said, but it of course destroyed the 3070, the most cut down Navi 21, a card over twice as big as the 5700 XT. It's going to have no problem beating an 8 nanometer 3070. I wasn't guessing, and I honestly don't even know where I would start. I mean, it uses the energy I said it did, not more. It has the performance of trading blows with the 3080, not exceeding it for the 6800 XT. Uh, the re revolutionary was literally used on the slides showing the cache. A source told me it was a revolutionary cache design. I Guys, e even my information that they tested a 384-bit version seems to be somewhat hinted at in this presentation. I wasn't guessing. I don't want to dwell on it, but I do need to point it all out because... Well, it was a lot of work, and I just hope you guys acknowledge how much work me, Dan, Gerard, Carbon Cry, and the team put into getting this information out to you guys early. That's all I'm going to say. Otherwise, just please remember there will be much more information coming over the successive months, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel, share these videos, and ring the bell button so you don't miss those videos. And of course, if you have the extra money, but only if you do, please consider supporting this platform on Patreon, where you'll get early ad-free access to podcasts every week, like Broken Silicon. Tomorrow, you will get it early and without ads. And of course, as always, thank you for watching. <laughs>